Jesus Christ urge us to do these things to gain our Heavenly Father approval, although this might be difficult to do, but it is a must to gain God's approval. Matthew 5, 44, 48. You heard that it was said, you must love your neighbor and hate your enemy. However, I say to you, continue to love your enemies and to pray for those who persecute you, so that you may prove yourselves sons of your Father who is in the heavens, since he makes his sun rise on both the wicked and the good, and makes it rain on both the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those loving you, what reward do you have? Are not also the tax collectors doing the same thing? And if you greet your brothers only, what extraordinary thing are you doing? Are not also the people of the nations doing the same thing? You must accordingly be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Matthew 548, leave a comment below for more. Watch out for True Happiness Part 2. True Definition of Real Happiness Part 1. Matthew 5, 1, 8 reads, When Jesus Christ saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and began teaching. Happy are those conscious of their spiritual need, since the kingdom of the heavens belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn, since they will be comforted. Happy are the mild-tempered, since they will inherit the earth. Happy are those hungering and thirsting for righteousness, since they will be filled. Happy are the peacemakers, since they will be called sons of God. Happy are those who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, since the kingdom of the heavens belongs to them. So what do we need to do to be truly happy? We need to regularly read God's Word, the Bible daily, meditate, and apply what we read. Watch out for part two. True happiness part two. Have you watched part one? See what true happiness means as Jesus Christ explained this to us clearly in Matthew 6, 9 to 11 of the New World Translation. Happy are the peacemakers since they will be called sons of God. Happy are those who have been persecuted for righteousness sake since the kingdom of the heavens belongs to them. Happy are you when people reproach you and persecute you and lyingly say every sort of wicked thing against you for my sake. Rejoice and be overjoyed, since your reward is great in the heavens, for in that way they persecuted the prophets prior to you. Also the psalmist told us what we can do to be truly happy in Psalm 1, 1 to 6. Happy is the man who does not walk according to the advice of the wicked, and does not stand on the path of sinners and does not sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of Jehovah, and he reads his law in an undertone day and night. He will be like a tree planted by streams of water, a tree that produces fruit in its season, the foliage of which does not wither, and everything he does will succeed. The wicked are not like that. They are like the chaff that the wind blows away. That is why the wicked will not remain standing in the judgment, nor will sinners remain standing the assembly of the righteous. For Jehovah is aware of the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Jesus Christ told Peter this in Matthew 18, 21, 22. Peter came and said to him, Lord, how many times is my brother to sin against me and am I to forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I say to you, not up to seven times, but up to 77 times. So the lesson is, we want to try to forgive other their errors. Why? Just as our Heavenly Father freely forgive us, and we all stumble many times. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able to bridle also his whole body. James 3, 2. seeds fell alongside the road, and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on rocky ground where there was not much soil, and they immediately sprang up because the soil was not deep. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Others fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them. Still others fell on the fine soil, and they began to yield fruit. 
one a hundred times, more than one sixty, the other thirty. Let the one who has ears listen. Have you subscribed? Do so now. Subscribe to watch part two now. Now listen to the illustration of the man who sowed. Where anyone hears the word of the kingdom but does not get the sense of it, the wicked one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the one sown alongside the road. As for the one sown on rocky ground, this is the one hearing the word and at once accepting it with joy. Yet, he has no root in himself, but continues for a time. And after tribulation or persecution has arisen on account of the word, he is at once stumped. As for the one sown among the thorns, this is the one hearing the word. But the anxiety of this system of things and the deceptive power of riches choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. As for the one sown upon the fine soil, this is the one hearing the word and getting it sensible who really does bear fruit and produce This one one hundred times more, that one sixty, the other thirty.